Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here from Serpent X Tech. And in this video, I want to talk about solo mining Caspa remotely, as in you have your main node set up at this location, but then you have farms in different locations containing GPUs, FPJs, ASICs that you all want to connect through one single node that you have full control over instead of relying on a pool that might have some instability, downtime, or centralized, or whatever it might be that you don't have control over. Uh, also, because you're mining to a pool, you're paying fees, whereas if you're mining to your node, you're not paying fees. Obviously, there's fees for miners, LOL miner, Team Red miner, T-Rex miner, whatever, but at least you're not paying extra fees mining to a pool, you're solo mining to your own node that you have control over. Now, this is all based on the premise that you already know what I'm talking about because you checked out Rapid Mining's video on how to set up your caspa wallet or kdx wallet and the stratum bridge this is just building upon that however you will need obviously your caspa or kdx wallet which you can download i'll have it linked down in the description here's the download button for windows right here they also have a number of different formats um, and the stratum bridge which is on version 1.1.6 right now uh, will also be linked down in the description including Rabid Mining's video on Caspa node setup plus solo mine, uh, where they go through how to configure all your local machines to mine through uh, one dedicated device's uh, node and smash some uh, solo blocks. Now, this is all taken into consideration that you already made the decision that you are going to solo mine because there are some inherent risk with solo mining, as I discussed in a different video. And because Caspa has been gaining a lot of traction uh, with the renewed interest in it, um, the blocks that you might hit or the number of blocks you might hit today may not be the number of blocks or similar to the number of blocks you were hitting earlier. For example, in December 2022 or in January 2023, because the net hash has increased quite drastically at time of filming from what it originally was, which increases the difficulty, which is going to reduce the number of blocks you have a likelihood of hitting. The, uh, the amount you get per block is going to be the same, but the amount of blocks that you might hit is going to be diminished for example with 18 giga hash some all my gp rigs and fpga i'm only getting about two blocks a day or 492 caspa or 17 dollars and 37 cents right now at time of filming whereas before um one fpga 4.2 giga hash i was able to hit a block in under 12 hours um and now i i could still possibly hit a block and uh, a single day on my FPJ, it's just not as consistent. Uh, again, here are the three blocks that I hit with the 18 giga hash over a 48 hour time frame. Um, so quite reduced compared to what it was in the earlier days. So with the Stratum Bridge downloaded, uh, which I have the Windows version, you could set up the bridge however you want, uh, whether it's on a Hive or Linux or whatever it might be. As long as you have the wallet synced up, and the bridge uh, com configured the way you want, you should be good to go. With this downloaded on a Windows system, uh, you will get these files, and you're going to want to left-click one time the config.yaml. Then you're going to right-click it, and on a Windows 10 machine, you could probably just click Open With. On a Windows 11 machine, if you don't see Open With here, go to Show More Options, and then click Open With, and you want to open it as a notepad. And you will see... We already have it configured for our local area network, our network here at this location, because we have an IP address in here. This is the IP address of the machine that contains the wallet and the node. To identify or find this information, you just go to a start, type in CMD, a window pops up, and you're going to type in IP config. Now, you want the IPv4 address for your machine, okay? So make sure you get that, copy that down, and put that right here before the port number 16110. Now, that number is very important, but so is this 5555. The Stratum port 5555 is what we use in our miners to connect to our local node, but we want to connect remotely. So that's where 16110 comes in because we have to tell our router or firewall, hey, connections, TCP or UDP connections coming in through this port number should be sent to this local device IP address. And this is the same local device IP address uh, of where our node and wallet is. And now I set some of my machines, including my Flux node, to a static IP 
because sometimes Comcast has issues, internet goes down, and when everything gets back up and line, I don't want a different IP causing confusion or issues, especially when I have connections to everything. So I have a static IP set for this machine that my node and my Caspa wallet or in my bridge are on. Uh, but you can see it's, it's port forwarding is what I'm using for the for ASUS. Uh, but I also had to make some adjustments in my firewall. Every configuration or network setup is going to be different. So consult whatever your router or firewall's configuration guide is. But you can see here that it's saying that anything coming in on port 16110, uh, go ahead and send to this local IP address for this port number. 5555. That's the way it's talking or explaining it to you. That's the way it's trying to connect to our local node here. Now, again, everything is going to be a bit different, but for the remote machines or rigs, we're going to be using port number 16110, not 5555. 5555 is going to be for our local rigs here. 16110 is what we're going to need to tell our remote machines. Now, you're going to need the public IP address for wherever your node is now this is the public ip address for your entire network with the outside world what the internet sees do not share that with anybody you can simply just go to google.com type in my ip or what's my ip address.com or what's my ip .org .com, anything will get you the ip address for your local area network for the outside internet address for your local area network and you're going to need that number plus 1610 as you can see here the server url is stratum plus tcp colon forward slash forward slash your public ip address colon 16110 followed by obviously your wallet address dot your worker name and you can see if i move out of your way the worker name on this remote machine is six uh 1660 ti mobile and that's important because i'm going to show you something here in a moment but the public ip address colon 16110 is what you're going to need to configure at the remote location or on the remote workers and when we start up the worker you would see it actually will connect which means that we are establishing a remote connection through our node and we got this remote farm or rig working through our node matter of fact as soon as this came up on the actual local machine where the node is at this guy came up and we can, can verify that the worker is showing online because it says 1660 ti mobile client connecting boom so now this remote machine is connected through our local node here at this location even though it's miles away at a different location now for the hive side of things what you want to do is is right now i'm going to show you what the local looks like right so hive flight sheet caspa whatever your wallet address pool choose configure and minor uh, minor you can choose whatever works for you but obviously we need to set up minor config and right now like i said it's set up for the local machine right this is a local ip address for my configuration and network here so that needs to be changed to whatever your public ip is for your internet of the location or the area hosting your node and stratum bridge but the port number needs to be changed from 5555 to 16110 and that right there will get this remote host or remote machine to connect through our node here. Now, the cut, the caveat is obviously depending on how far, like if the, the, the remote location is in Germany and I'm connecting here in, uh, you know, the United States, Southeast United States, there could be a uh, 350 millisecond ping or latency. There could be 500, 600, 1,000. And if obviously that that latency increases, then when you go to submit a share, you could be slow in submitting it and you lose out on a chance for a block. Kind of like a teacher that does testing. You got 60 minutes to complete the test and turn it in at their desk. But you're sitting there, you're lagging, and you go to turn it in, it's after time so you don't get credit. Maybe somebody else turns in their paperwork on time or ahead of you and they get the block, not you. I know, poor analogy, but just trying to explain it. But now we can get all our remote machines and all our remote rigs in different locations all connected through one node that we control and have, have access to. But obviously, we're opening up that port number for this solo mining excursion, uh, excursion and that can be a problem if you don't know how to properly secure your firewall network that could be an issue but this is how you can get all of your farms to combine all your hash power to solo mine some caspa blocks regardless of 
them being on site or not. So I hope you got some useful information out of this video. If you did, please do me a favor on the way out, hit the like button, make sure to get subscribed, hit notification bell, stay up to date as well as check out some of the links in the description. They'll support the channel and what we do here. And you just have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. I'll catch you in the next one.